Robin, record first. And welcome back to another episode of Four Chicks Chatting. The Four Chicks are ready to chat your ears off today because we are just going and going here. We have the most incredible conversation ready, and we are going to spotlight what is supposed to be one of our chicks, but all of our chicks tend to, to jump in on this topic, and our chick, Robin, is going to lead the charge on, a, on this this episode topic that she is the expert on and, and gets us all engaged in figuring our stuff out when it comes to personal branding. The Woo! stuff you are gonna learn today is unbelievable. So turn your volume up and quiet down all of your background noise because you're gonna wanna focus on this. Robin focuses now on building a brand that sells. And I am gonna just have Robin take it over right from that spot so we start with brilliance bombs galore from the very beginning. Robin, tell us about building a brand that sells. Okay, Kathy, what are you motioning for me to do? <laughs> Nothing. I was, okay, I just keep your, seeing your hand motions and I was confused. Does that have no. to do with branding? For okay. our fans that watch us on YouTube, I was pointing to oh. Robin. When Chris okay, well, and one screen. of our own. Oh, just, I'm above you, that's uh, why I was confused. <laughs> All right, so for anybody me. watching on, on YouTube, you're great and you'll see what's going on here behind the scenes. For those of you just listening, you may want to go check it out on YouTube <laughs> because the, the, the craziness is, is real. Remember um, those I'm with stupid t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> I used to see those on the Wildwood Boardwalk. I think I want to change the intro to welcome to stupid is as stupid does. Too. <laughs> Perhaps right. we can get back on topic. And no, no, no. All right. so to four back to chatting. personal branding with Robin <laughs> yeah. Graham. Okay. So I guess I'll start with saying that personal branding is deliberate differentiation. It's basically Ooh. your introduction to the world and your ideal audience, your dream clients, those people that you really want to have hire you. Um, so you can do that through visual content, which is really, really critical. And it does make a huge difference in terms of your abil ability to sell without selling. So your goal is to represent yourself authentic authentically, consistently, and cohesively so that anybody that goes to search for your name or your business will see who you are, what you do, how you do it. And your, your image should be very clear to everyone, both in terms of visual content as well as copy. So when someone lands on your website, they should see who you are so that your eyes and your smile can draw them in immediately. So they can immediately get to know who you are, who's behind the business and who's going to be serving them. Um, you want that emotional connection so that um, immediately they'll know that they can trust you because if they don't know you, like you and trust you, they're not going to buy from you. The reality is that more and more, because we live in a digital world, people are buying people. They're not necessarily buying the service or the product because they're not going to buy the service unless they know who's providing it and how well that person's providing it. So back to your image and having that on your website, front and center is really key. So your homepage, your about page, 100% should have you and your image and then copy that really dictates what you do. And then on your social media platforms, be it Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you are, LinkedIn, you should have a professional headshot as your profile picture and one that is recognizable just like the pictures on your website are recognizable. So I'm going to take a breath and let you guys <laughs> ask me questions because I felt like I was just kind of like on a tangent, but there's so much and you guys know, I get so excited because I'm so passionate about this. Well, you are. Yeah. And your passion comes through. So say I'm just starting out right now and I contact you and I have a brand or a product or a service that I am just getting ready to launch and I don't know where to start. Walk me through the process. So if you've already got a product or a service that you know you're going to to sell, that you know you're building your business around. Then we would start with your a visual branding package. We would create a shot list and make sure that every shot that you had, image, photograph, is representative of what you do and how you do it. 
So we would include things like behind the scenes shots of you doing what you're doing. So say you have um, a sticky note company that has inspirational quotes on it. Then we would even get you packaging those, those sticky notes to get ready for shipment. Um, things, things like that. So that people can really get a sense that you're hands-on, you care about the quality that um, your, your passion for your, your product goes into the product and so the end user can appreciate it more because they know who is putting the love and effort into that product. Um, we'd also focus on um, how to use those pictures and where to put those pictures and including captions for those pictures. What's really important that people don't realize is when you're using pictures for your business and for your website, there are certain things that you have to include. So you have to include um, a title for the image and the title should not be the, the title that comes out of the, on the JPEG or the, the raw file from the photographer's camera. It should be specific to what you are doing who you are and that kind of thing. So like for me on my website, I always have pictures of personal brand branding clients and headshot clients. So I have, I title those images headshot for corporate financial advisor or something like that. So, or maybe it's um, headshot uh, or personal branding for author, something like that. So um, can I just jump in here real quick, Robin? You are talking about back end stuff on your website. You're not exactly. talking about a caption. No. Nope. So people are, these things that you're saying, when you put up an image on your website, there is a, a place for you to put a title. And yes. you're telling us that the, the title needs to be somewhat indicative of your brand, your product, whatever. Yes. 100%. And that's not going to show up on your website. So nope. people need to know that. That's back end stuff. The caption back -end shows stuff. the title. The caption doesn't. will show. But you don't need to put the caption there. The caption isn't going to help your search engine optimization, and it could clutter your the actual website. So if you have those captions, when you do a blog post, it's a great idea to put the caption there because people are going to see that right away, and it kind of helps flow into the blog post. But for your like portfolio and stuff like that on your website, you don't need to have the caption. Um, but you need to have alt text. You need to have that alt text because any single person that goes to your website who is non-sighted needs to know exactly what that image is. So for example, when I'm uploading, like say I did a, a, a picture of Mary Fran, a headshot of Mary Fran, um, and I'm uploading that to my website, I would have that alt text say, beautiful woman, smiling, short blonde hair in a blue top with white buttons, hand on hip right hand on hip, something like that. So it's that detailed so that anybody that's non-sighted can actually figure out exactly what that picture is of and have a, a visual that they can't, you know, see with their eyes. And that's, that's something, and Kristen, I know you're passionate about this. Like even on Instagram, when you are posting your pictures on Instagram, include that alt text because there is a big audience out there that is non-sighted. And so that helps, um, Grow your audience because then they know that you care about them as your audience as well. Um, and then your description. And the description is important because if you set up a Pinterest business account or a rich pin, you can then ha pin any pictures you put on your website onto Pinterest and that description is going to be there so that no one has to guess what that picture is of or what that picture is depicting as far as your business or your brand goes. So those are all those are all steps where we would start, Kath. We would, you know, really dive into the images for your brand, and then we would take it to that next level where we talk about how you're going to use those images, and let's strategize on the captions and things like that that you could use for your social content. So, do you help me? Um, I don't want to say pick colors, but create my own, I guess, branding colors or. Say I'm starting completely starting from scratch. I like the color pink. I would like pink. So I, I know we're getting really basic here, but I'm just thinking of people who really don't understand the ins and outs as well as you do. How actually, do we go about picking our brand colors? It's not basic at all, Kathy. There's, um, it's actually pretty complex, um, but colors have meaning and color psychology is huge in terms of branding. And when you work with a, a graphic designer or a logo designer, this is something that they 
if they don't, they should be looking at with you. Um, and one thing that I do when I work with my students in my course is we'll actually create a mood board in on Pinterest. So they can actually go in Pinterest and anything that they see that reflects their emotions and their mood that goes into their business is how you create that mood board. So it could be anything from, you know, a picture of a woman wearing a long flowy dress that's pink and on the beach. Mm. Like that gives that feeling of who you are at the root. Because keep in mind, your brand is your personality infused into your business. So that's you want, tweetable, everybody. Yeah, you, you want to keep that your personality showing and that's where the colors come in. So, you know, like Kristen, blue is a color that you use a lot and mm -hmm. blue is a very trustworthy color. So you are building an audience that you really want them and need them to trust you because you're the expert in the rare eye disease field for blindness or CRB1. So, um, you know, it's funny. I picked blue because I have blue eyes. <laughs> I didn't know it was trustworthy. Well, I have blue eyes and, and I tend to have a lot of blue stuff and it was my son's favorite color. But if that's part of my personality, what you're saying is, is, um, you know, that, that goes with people know me as that person with blue eyes cause they're ginormous and you can't miss them. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got smiling lucky. hard in a picture. They disappear. You got lucky, but it's actually, it's, you know, I think you're, I think as people, we're kind of drawn to those colors that mean something to us. And mm -hmm. like pink, pink is a happy color. So, you know, like you want your clients, Kathy, that you're training to be, to be happy, but you also want, and it, it kind of goes along with your, um, the whole concept of communication to keep things in a pleasant environment so that everybody works together well. So if you think <laughs> about that, it does, it does cross over. But the other thing that's important with the colors is um, one thing that I always ask, like on my questionnaire at the very beginning is, do you have a color palette for your brand and do you have a mood board? And if you don't, I work with them to, to create that because, and then I also work with um, a, a graphic designer and a brand, visual brand specialist who um, has strategies for doing that as well. And then I have my own little method that's very similar to hers in terms of of creating those, the colors and um, making sure that they fit with the brand. That's if you don't have them. If you do have them, then you bring in colors in your wardrobe that tie into your brand. So if we were doing, if pink was in your color, then I would say, let's bring in pink so that we can really incorporate that. And it could be from a coffee mug, a scarf, um, a blanket. Like we use, I use a gazillion different types of props to bring in the color of the brand so that when we're doing the website, the website actually will flow um, collectively. And then that again is consistent across your website and your social platforms so that the second people see that, they get a feel for who you are and they recognize you right away. So consistency is, is key here for sure. There, very much, because if you're not consistent, people aren't going to understand who you are and they're not going to trust you. And that trust, like I said before, is, is critical because if they don't know you, like you, and trust you, they're not going to buy from you. I have a cool color story that somebody cool. just told me about. It was a head of a, a CEO of a massive research organization got in the mail the new book from the CEO of another massive research organization. She had a new book and sent it to the to one CEO. And when she opened it, she goes, and if you know Julia, this thing was hot pink. I knew it was her as soon as I saw it. And then she posted a picture of it with her holding it on Twitter and said, oh my God, I have Julia's new book. And people were commenting because Julia's always in hot pink. They totally associated that color with her even though their her job wouldn't necessarily say hot pink her herself her personality is hot pink that was pretty cool and Kristen that brings up an important fact because if you're in the corporate world you still have a personal brand mm -hmm. and you may not have a website with images of you on it and you may not be posting professional pictures of you in the business perspective on your social media platform but you still have a personal brand and your headshot, a professional headshot represents your brand, you know, your LinkedIn profile um, and how people see you as a professional across your sector of expertise is, is very important. And it, it comes down to um, 
even like on LinkedIn, if you don't have a professional headshot, which if you're corporate, that becomes your, your personal brand, so to speak. Um, the recruiters and potential employers, HR representatives will scroll right by your profile. So like if you have a gray head, they're not even going to look at the content in your bio. They're going to skip right over you. And the same thing, you know, if you have like a, a picture of you with, you know, a friend and you're at a bar and that's your, your face, but it's underexposed, it was a cell phone picture or whatever, they're going to skip right over that because you don't demonstrate that you care about quality and professionalism. Mm -hmm. And then back to the whole pink concept, this is something that, um, any guys that are listening will appreciate or any women who have men in the corporate world. If you're a guy that is in the corporate world in a female dominant environment, wear a pink tie or a pink shirt for your headshots because that softens your personality and, uh, and it makes you look more approachable and it will allow you to connect more with women. And then on the flip side of that for women like Navy black, um, are great colors for like a blazer in a headshot or a blouse because they're strong classical trustworthy colors that show that you're still you're strong but yet you're classic traditional and trustworthy so it kind of it flips so that the colors really are a big deal and that's one piece of with every client I work with we talk about colors before they even come into the studio so Robin I I'm kind of flashing back to a couple of years ago when the four of us went out and did like a branding shoot that you took individual shots of, of all mm -hmm. of us in different locations and everything. And, you know, I have to say when we were in the middle of it, we're, first of all, it was 700 degrees. That it was day. the hottest day. So hot. Oh my so gosh. Hot. It was so hot. It was, it was July <laughs> in the scorching sun in new hope, but we're marching around and we're, we're taking all these shots and you have such a great eye for location shoots and things like that. But in the moment, all I'm thinking of is, oh my God, it's so hot. Like that was all <laughs> I could think of. And yet at the end of it, when we got those shots back, there were so many phenomenal images that just if with a right tagline, with a right few words that put on website, I can't tell you how many times I have used those images over and over and over again. Mm -hmm, and I think the key is finding somebody like you who can visualize what this, the big picture is supposed to be. And, you know, somebody standing there and there were a couple of pictures where you caught an expression just because you're shooting the whole time. And those were the pictures that I use over and over again with different taglines because they truly represent what I'm trying to convey. And we, we were talking about this before the show, selling without saying a word. It's, it's, that, it's that immediate attraction that you get when you see an appealing image mm -hmm. um, that draws you to someone and makes an emotional connection. Going back to your original point of no like, and trust, it's about making an emotional connection, regardless of how unemotional the topic is. Like you, again, you gave an example of, of the sticky notes. Well, seeing someone packaging their product, you know, as you said, that they care about that product. There's the emotional connection. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly. about that too. It's about making that emotional connection with these images and you do that so well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think it helps that I'm so passionate about what I do. I mean, I, I truly love what I do. And that one of the biggest things for me that's most rewarding is 98% of the people that come into the studio are like, I take awful pictures. I'm not photogenic. Like, I don't know how this is going to go. And people have real anxiety over this. I mean, they put it off for years and then they're asked for a picture because they won an award or they got a promotion and they don't have one. And, you know, or they have a cell phone picture and the person that they have to submit it to says, we can't use that. You have to have a professional headshot. And whenever we're finished and the most beautiful thing for me is that they'll say, oh my gosh, you made me look beautiful and feel confident. And to me, that's the most rewarding thing that anybody can say to me is that I've made them feel that way. But I do want to say like when you choose to work with a photographer and now yet like my, I, I will always do the headshots and the personal branding shoots. Like that's just part of my business. Now I have the 
the course that goes along with that to actually build a brand. And we can talk in a minute about you know, how you figure out if you don't have a product or service, how you figure out where you want to go or what you want to be when you grow up. And I can tell you about my brand equation, but the, when you're looking to hire a person to do your branding imagery, interview a couple of people. You want to make sure that you have a personal relationship with that person, because if you don't, your pictures aren't going to be what you want them to be. You want to make sure that you feel comfortable so that you are able to relax in front of the camera. You want to make sure that that person understands what you do and how you do it so that they can create a shot list for you that is going to really represent you in the best possible way to your ideal clients or your dream audience. And you want to look like you. You want to look like you. And yeah. I hate when the people do the air thing and all that, and then you get to a conference and you don't know who the hell they are. They walk yeah. up and you're like, I saw you on LinkedIn. I've been looking for you for three days and this is you. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like and, you. And you know that what? I 20 have, years ago, but it's not yeah. you now. Yeah. And make people, it current. <laughs> people don't want to look, they don't want to put out who they are. They think if they're aging, then that's, people aren't going to want to hire them or aren't going to want to work with them. And I'm like, you have to understand if you don't represent yourself as who you are, they're not going to trust you when they meet their, you. They're going to say, well, that's not who I thought it was. Yeah, trust. You know? They're not even going to find you. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, it, it's crazy. And, you know, I, I, my makeup artist that I use is um, we do a sun-kissed look. That's what we call it, a sun-kissed look. And the important thing about it is that we use non-SUV, um, not SUV, um, SPF. <laughs> God, where's my brain? <laughs> I'm on carpool duty already. Um, <laughs> Not non SPF products so that we don't have glare, you know, when the lights hit, hit the skin, but, um, it's that sun kissed look so that you look natural and yeah, we'll cover up imperfections, things like that. But I mean, if you've got a few wrinkles, let me tell you, you earned every one of them <laughs> and yes, we will soften those up, but I don't remove every wrinkle because then you have no affect and you're like a zombie and people are looking at you like, well, I'm not going to work with her. She has no personality. So you don't want that either. People say to me, you look just like your picture on, on social media. I'm like, well, that's because that's, it's me. But it's supposed to look like. <laughs> it, it, no, wait. We talk about authenticity a lot. And really, I mean, that's you, if you're not representing yourself in pictures authentically, then I mean, you may as well just throw in the towel. Hey, I even put my headshot on my business card now and I can't tell you the reactions that I get and then people remember me uh -huh. yeah. and, um, and it, it has just taken branding to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because because you're, 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 the, you're the brand. You're the face you of the are brand. The brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I always say. That's my hashtag. Be the face of your brand. <laughs> yeah. Now you said something about your branding equation. What is, what is yes, that? Yes. I love to talk about this because it's funny. We, I have a lot of people that come in from corporate to do headshots, especially from pharmaceutical companies. And when I tell them my story of, you know, how I have a doctor in pharmacy and now I'm a photographer, they're blown away by that, that I had the courage to follow my passion and do something completely outside the box. Your brain With is a very scary place. I just got to <laughs> tell you, there is so much going on up there. It is, is downright scary. It doesn't Brilliant, stop. But frightening. It doesn't <laughs> stop. I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm exhausted. <laughs> No, <laughs> no branding equation. Focus. We're focused. So, anyway, people will come to me and they'll say, oh my gosh, you know, um, I want to find something that I'm passionate about. I want something I can do. And then I've had people come in and it's like, you know, we're, we're actually going to be downsizing and I'm going to lose my job and I've got to find something that I can do until it's retirement age or whatever. And so I, I tell people, you know, look at your visions. Where do you see yourself? three years, five years, 10 years from now, what are your values? You know, what, what are your values? What, what fuels you, but what most importantly, like, where is your integrity? Like, where does that lie? What are your morals? What are your ethics? Like what values do you stand for that would open up doors for an opportunity for you to serve a certain population? Hmm. And then what are your passions? 
you know, what, what are you passionate about? Are you passionate about helping others with communication? Are you helping others survive and thrive without sight? You know, what are, are you passionate about helping other people who may be struggling with children who have drug addiction or, you know, the, I'm talking all examples related to you guys right now, but, um, you know, what are your passions? Like what really moves you? What really fuels your heart? And if you combine those three factors, that's going to give you your, help you identify your niche, your niche, niche, however you want to say it (laughs) and, or your personal brand, which, so that's, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's exactly that. It's personal. What drives you, Mm -hmm. what, what means something to you and regardless of what you're, selling, marketing, teaching, doing, whatever, you have to infuse it with a part of you or it's not going to be differentiated from everybody else who's doing the same thing. And let's face it, there's somebody out there doing the same thing, regardless of what it is. Yeah. We're never going to be the first one to do anything. There's always somebody else, but how can you, number one, do that thing better? But how can you differentiate yourself as the person that's doing it better? Right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, you know, just just another um, a little a little note with the, about the power of of these images. I was at a um, oh my gosh, I forget where I where I was, but I I walked into a place and 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 I was meeting people. I don't know if it was for the first time or whatever. And and they said something to me like, "Oh, there's Mary Fran, and she's always smiling." Well, I am so not always smiling. <laughs> So mm-hmm. not always smiling, uh-huh. <laughs> but I do do everything that I do is infused with humor. So that is an important part of my brand and the images that you took of me. And obviously the ones that I use, there is a measure of, I mean, there's one, Kathy Marcino was off to the side saying something that literally had me doubled over laughing. And I think you, it involved an orange cone. Maybe. It, it did. I, I don't, I, we won't go into what, where the commentary went, but it was something about, it was a traffic cone. I don't know what was happening, but she said something really funny and I literally was doubled over laughing and I get such positive feedback from that image because it was in the moment. It was me just reacting to a friend of mine who was being her hysterical self mm-hmm. and it 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 showed a part of me that a posed headshot whatever doesn't always necessarily show so so combining your personality into your personal brand is is really really important because people immediately identify you with something that that again for me it's humor and people when they saw me they were like oh you're always smiling well like i said no i'm not but but that's the image that i needed to convey and it, and it was clearly done with the help of those images well i love when you use them that makes me so happy anytime i see anybody using anything i've done for them so and that was a lot and on gentlemen uh, kathy is available for hire she comes along oh my gosh I do. Entertainment on my Kathy Marcino <laughs> will will just put you in such a good mood, and you'll just be laughing, and your pictures will be amazing. Yeah, you don't have, have to have make to have a list in decide. advance of what you want her to say. That's funny. It just comes it up. It just comes up. <laughs> you make a list of the photos you want, but then you just bring her along, and and yes, and the smiles are forever. They are. Ladies and gentlemen, your entertainment has arrived. <laughs> So talk about an episode full of amazing tips. Um, you know, you've given us so much to think about. And I think it's important to understand there was a lot of technical stuff in there that was making my head hurt at the beginning about the back end website and all that stuff. But you don't need to be overwhelmed by that. No. You need to get the images use them to identify your brand and portray who you are and then find somebody like Robin who knows how to do all that other stuff and can help guide you through it. Yeah. And that's the key. Like when I work with people, like I, I do that stuff. I give them all that information. So I make it easy. So it's not so daunting. Good. Robin, how can people find out more about this course and whether it's for them? So I would highly encourage everyone to find me on Instagram. It's at the Robin Graham, Robin with a Y. And my um, website is www.robingrahamphotography.com. 
but you can book a call with me. And the best thing is for us to have a chat live so that I can then help you decide which tier of the program is best for you because I do offer a couple of different options and it depends on where you are with your business, where you are Good. with your brand as to what level of um, branding uh, help you're going to need. And all that information will be in our show notes as well. Yes. With the link and to my calendar. <laughs> I'd also encourage everybody to go look at the four chicks Instagram and website and then the individual four chicks Instagram pages because we have been working on overhauling our own individual stuff with this knowledge from Robin and you can see the evolution like go back to the beginning of our pages and see the evolution of where we started putting some of this stuff into place and you'll see how it all started to to flow a lot better and our own branding is starting to come to I say starting. We are all starting on this <laughs> on this wagon ride together. We know who's at the end of the train. It's me. I didn't say any wagon. judging. I okay. just didn't notice. We're dragging <laughs> you along behind us in the wagon and, and you're kicking and screaming. <laughs> well, you will see us all laughing too in a lot of these photos. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that happens mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and in, if anybody stuff. is wondering, when we do a photo shoot, we don't have someone else. It's my tripod and my camera. So there's a lot of me running and jumping in. Literally jumping. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yes, there's, there's been some jumping. <laughs> that adds to the laughing factor. Yes, and, and, and also track our uh, boomerang progress. We're getting much better at boomerangs. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> funny. But again, that branding. comes to our brand, right? And, Absolutely. And what, we're trying, and what we're trying to do for our audience and with our audience and how we want to share ourselves and hopefully help others in the process. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're interested to hear everybody's uh, uh, own journey with personal branding and images and things like that. And um, questions you might have for Robin, leave them in the comments as you see us on, on that social thing and um, leave us reviews on iTunes. And now you can even comment on, on YouTube. <laughs> God right. help the world. God help there the world. are visuals to go with the audio now. Everybody call Robin. Call Robin <laughs> All right. That wraps up another episode of Four Chicks Chatting. Thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you next time.